All right. Hello, knitters. Welcome back. We are finally at our very last lesson. We're at the toe decreases, and I'm here again with Louise Patterson of Wildflower Wool. Hi, Louise. Hi, Caroline. <laughs> are you ready? I Are am. we ready to go? We are ready to go. All right. Well, as you can see, this is uh, another one of my socks that's almost ready to, it is actually ready to have the toe put in. It is not my yellow and gray sock because that one is not even close to being ready to having the toe put in. So I thought I would show this one because because it was at that stage. I've done my measurements. It matches my second one. Um, and it's on the nine inch circular. I do my toes with a set of DPNs. So it's at this point where I would transfer these stitches evenly in between four DPNs and get ready to do my toe decreases. So you wanna also make sure that if you're moving from a circular to four DPNs, that you put your DPNs in the right spot so that when you do your toe, that your decreases are on the correct so, two sides. So you're gonna split it in half, That's right. right? So one. Half your stitches. Two. So in quarters. Yep, three and four. Just making sure that your toe, because I did have a student once. She put her toe the wrong way in. She put her toe the wrong way. So you've got your heel here, so your toe should match. Be in line. Yeah. She did it. She did her toe that way. way. <laughs> so I've only ever seen that once. So make sure you're putting your decreases on the right side. Yes. On the sides. Right here. That's right. Right here. So once you've transferred over to the DPNs, you're ready to start your decrease rounds. It's, it's very similar to the decrease rounds that you did on the gusset. It's exactly yes. the same. So Louise, her sock is at the point where she's gone ahead and she's done the decreases as marked in the pattern, just like the gusset decreases, just follow the pattern. And she is ready to do one more round of decrease and then Kitchener the toe. So she's gonna right. take you through one round of decreases and then we'll go from there. Right. So what I've done is I've worked, finished my gusset decreases, worked my t my foot straight up until I was two inches short of the length of my foot. So you can see where I've started to do my toe decreases. So that's where Caroline, where you are right there, correct, is exactly right there. So you you're going to have it takes about two inches to do your toe. So that's right. why we've left that extra two inches. So what I've done, where Caroline, where you are right now, you're going to do exactly what I'm going to do up here, just on, you've got more stitches. You've got your 68 stitches. I have to decrease down until I get to where you're at. Right. So I am going to, so like you had said, the decreases on the toe were the same as for the gusset. Yes. Except this time we're decreasing on all four needles. Correct. That's the only difference, but we're still doing knit twos together and slip slip knits for our decreases. So this is what it's looking like. Our beginning of the round is still in the center of our heel. So I've got one more round to do, a decrease round. So that you're going to work this the same whether you've got 68 stitches or when you're down to the end where you're getting down to like 16 stitches. So on my needle one, I'm going to knit to the last three stitches. There's my last three. I'm going to do a knit two together. And then knit the last one. And while you're doing these toe decreases, you still want to make sure that you're snugging up that yarn. Right. Between, in between the rounds. Yeah, in between needles. The needles. So now on this needle, we're going to knit one. Then we're going to do a slip slip knit. So slip and slip, knit the two together. And then just give it an extra little tug. Now you're gonna to knit to the end of this needle. And this is just make, make sure, once you've got a few rounds of the decreasing done, you can see where your decreases go. Right. You don't want to accidentally decrease here. Think you're at the end of a needle and decrease. So now we're on needle three. Because that would not look good. No. <laughs> so I'm down to the end here. I don't, I don't have, 
hmm, obviously I don't have the right stitch number <laughs> on, the, on the needle, but that's okay. So what I'm going to do here is I would knit to my last three stitches. Right. Apparently I'm already there. I'm going to do a knit two together. And then I'll knit the last stitch. So, and this is the same as with the gusset decreases. We're going to have one round of decreasing, and then you'll work one round plain knit. Plain knit. So here I'm going to knit one, and then do a slip slip knit. And then, okay. So now I'm down, I'm finished. My toe decreases are done, my, my sock is finished. Hooray! Just need to Kitchener stitch it together. So in the pattern it's going to tell you, because we've got our working yarn in the middle of our, of our right. needles, right? Right, we're not right? at the end of where we need to be. Right, so you're just going to knit across, because now what we want to do, we want to put our remaining stitches onto two needles. Right. So we're just going to knit across these next needle one stitches. If you. So this is going to put half of the remaining stitches onto one needle. Just like that. These two needles here you're just going to slide. It doesn't matter which way you go. These stitches to here or these to here. Right. You just want you're just transferring them over to yeah. the one needle. Yeah. Whatever you've got left on these two needles, we want them all on one. So just slip them purlwise. There. So there we are. So now what we're gonna do Take your scissors and you're going to leave that much yarn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Enough of a tail. Enough of a tail. I think I actually measured it out and put a, a measurement on there on the, on the pattern. Right. So you're going to thread that tail of working yarn onto a darning needle now. Right. And now you're going to turn your work around so that you've got your working yarn on the right hand side of your work. You want to make sure that this working yarn isn't going to get twisted around any of these needles right. as we're working. So Kitchener stitch. We're going to close these stitches together. Mm -hmm. Basically we're just making what actually looks as another knit stitch. Another knit stitch in the middle, right? Yep. Yeah. So, we have to do a little bit of a setup row. So, I always think of my needles as this is a front needle, this is the back needle. Right. And we're always going to work two stitches. We're going to work two stitches in the front, mm -hmm. then we're going to work two stitches in the back. Right. One stitch comes off, the second stitch stays on. Right. One off, one on. One off, one on. Two in the front, two in the back. Right. So, what we have to do to get set up and, I, and I've, I've wrote this out, hopefully really clearly, mm -hmm. in the pattern, is we have to do a little setup row with the first stitch on the front and the back. So we are going to go in the front needle, we're going to go in purlwise, mm -hmm. and this does make a difference. So I always suggest that you sit in a nice quiet place and do this start to finish. Start to finish, don't leave it in the middle. Right. And then we have to go in knitwise in the back on the back stitch and we're going to leave both of these on so see how that's getting twisted right. around there we don't want make that sure you take it off yeah so there each stitch has been worked once that's kind of that's our setup right now what we're going to do is just move right into the actual kitchener stitch in the front we go in knitwise and it comes off and then i pull the yarn up snug mm -hmm still in the front because we have to work two stitches, go in purlwise mm -hmm. and leave that stitch on. There, and just snug it up. 
Now we go to the back. We're going to work two stitches. Make sure that your yarn goes in between underneath, underneath. underneath the two needles. Yeah. So we're going to go in. Top. We're going to go in here purlwise and it slips off. And then our second stitch goes in knitwise and it stays on. Then you come back to the front, knitwise and off. Purlwise and on. Purlwise and off. Knitwise and on. So you just want to be careful that those, when you're leaving some on and off, that nothing slips off accidentally. Because right. you'll have live stitches that have slipped off. Yeah. So then knitwise and off, purlwise and on. Purlwise and off. So this doesn't leave a bump. This is um, a little bit more beneficial than a three needle bind off because it doesn't leave a seam on the inside of your sock. Right, so it's a little more comfortable. Yeah. And you can use this for darning and doing the top of mittens as well. Mm -hmm. It's a very oh. handy thing to know how it to do. It is. People get a little scared about doing it. But it's really not that hard. It's not that hard. It just takes a little practice and if you've got the notes in front of you yeah. for the first little while until you've done a few socks Lies and off. I always refer to yours. Eventually you'll get to the point where you yeah. can do it. And it lies on. You're out of the camera there. Oh, am Sorry. I? Yeah, right there. Am I there? No, you're good. Okay. I was trying to actually see close up how my <laughs> stitches were looking. Because, you know, because when you do this, you know, I wanted to say correctly, but I don't know if that's, you know, ideally this should look invisible. Right. But Mine still doesn't. That's exactly. And you know what? And you don't need to worry about that because nobody's going to be looking that closely. And it I kind of comes. Finished. <laughs> exactly. Finish it and finished get it and done. and wearable and pretty. Right, because you know what, because it, it does, if you do it correctly, if you get all your knits and your pearls and your on and offs done right, it will look seamless. Yeah. If you... And I mean, I do it right. It's still, it's probably a, a little bit of my tension. Yeah. Pulling a little too tight in certain places, things like that. Yeah. And you can, if it's looser, you can go around and you can, and you can work your way back. Sorry. Sorry. Um, okay, but it's wise not, enough. It's not easy to do. It's not easy to unpick. It is a not stitch. easy to yeah. unpick so you, it. This is why you really want to take your time with this step because you don't want to have to redo it. No. You and want to try your best to get it right because the first it's, time. Because it's invisible, right? It is hard yeah. to kind of it's hard to see go it. back. So here we go. So when you get to the end here, we're just going to go in because we only have one stitch left. Yeah. I'm just going to go and take it off. And go in here purlwise and take it off. And just snug it up. And then now that we've got our tail, we have to weave this in anyways. Right. And there is a little point there. Mm -hmm. But when you put that inside your sock, you're gonna turn you're gonna turn it inside out to weave that in. Mm -hmm. When you pull this in here, can you see? Yep. Yeah. You're gonna be able to snug that up so that point isn't pointy. As pointy. Yeah. yeah. You're gonna be able to pull it down. Just like that. There. So see, hopefully, how well. <laughs> it's, 
it should look that kitchener stitching looks pretty good should just look like we've got continuous knit stitches going from the back up the top and down the front again but like we said right i mean yeah part we're not striving for perfect and if this is your first time kitchener stitching yeah as long as you get something done that's closed yeah you know be happy with that you're winning exactly <laughs> so perfect look at that. that was I think pretty that darn pretty good and congratulate yourself because you now have a finished a finished sock look at that a finished sock and, and then you Louise just get now has a pair i have a pair <laughs> look at that make sure you cast on your second one right away yes do that right away because people tend to not that i know struggle. anyone like that no because <laughs> you want a pair you want to be able to wear them Definitely. so cast on see and mine don't quite match but i'm okay with that they're fraternal that's right the toes aren't but that Excellent. makes that makes them Funner. Even better. Even better. Funner. Yes. Funner. Funner. Good. Well, thanks so much. All right. Awesome. Well. There's only one other thing that I can think of that we should probably talk mm -hmm. about, but I think we should do it in a separate video, and that is if people have holes in the gusset. Right. You were going to show us we how were gonna show. to seam this in. So I'm going to stop this video now. Okay. And next Tuesday, we'll put out another little video about how to fix any holes in there. Perfect. Sounds so good. if you do have a hole, not to worry, don't fear, just leave it, move on to your second sock, and um, we'll get that video out as soon as we can. All right, thanks so much. Happy knitting.